one's life. Where their phone will stop working. It'll stop holding a charge, it'll randomly turn on and off, and eventually you'll lose all your contacts and your world will end. And you'll have the choice. You can either buy the newest phone with the best upgrades and new camera, but this can run you anywhere from like $600 to $800 or more. Or you can buy something a few generations older, and this is how we personally save money on our phones. Until recently, I have bought my phones off of Craigslist, although I would not recommend this, as you never know when you're buying somebody else's problem. So what we did for the most recent one was we bought a refurbished Google Pixel off of Amazon. It was only $180 and it works great. The charge is amazing on it. Um, I'm not saying everybody needs a Google Pixel, but instead of getting the newer phone or even the version that we had, we were able to save hundreds of dollars by getting a refurbished one as opposed to a new one, and then also one that is a few generations older as opposed to a new one as well. So I think it's really important. Unless you need uh, a really nice phone for work or something like that, then don't get caught up in having the newest and the best of everything. Just be happy with something that works really well and does what you need a phone to do. Another way to save money with your phone would be to reconsider if you need the unlimited package that you had. Maybe if you're on Wi-Fi all the time or you don't use your phone that often, you might be better off with something that is pay as you go, kind of pay for texts and minutes and data as you use them. Or you could try switching to a different company that might offer a better deal or calling the company that you're at now and negotiating with them for a better deal. Another thing that you could do is use a company like Bill Fixer. Bill Fixer, um, this is what they do. They will call companies and negotiate rates for you. So this is a really cool tool for saving money as somebody else does all the work for you and you just collect the savings. If you don't wanna do that, you could try switching to a company like Republic Wireless, Google Fi, or Boost Mobile. All these should have relatively similar coverages to what you are at, but should be a lot cheaper. We personally don't have a TV, so we don't have cable, but if you do have cable and you want it, you just wanna find a cheaper way to do it, you could try using a satellite antenna. These on average are around $25 to $50 and you will be able to get a bunch of free channels once you hook this up. Um, you won't be able to get like the HBOs and things like that, but you'll be able to get a lot of local channels and every all the basic things you need. And for the most part, when you're paying for a cable package, you're probably not using 90% of the stuff that is on there. So this can be a really cheap option if you just wanna have your basic channels. Or if you don't need TV, then just use your Netflix or your Hulu or your Amazon Prime or whatever you have and save money that way. A cool way to start saving mo money and actually buying less is to go through your house find things that you haven't used in a year, in six months, in, in five years, and go ahead and sell those. Sell them on Let Go, on Craigslist, on the Facebook Marketplace, and try to get, you can probably get at least a couple hundred dollars doing this, and then when you go to the store and you look at something and you're about to buy it, you might think, am I just gonna be throwing this away in a few months, and am I just wasting this? Is it gonna bring me this much joy, or am I just gonna be cluttering up my house again? This is something that has worked really well for us as we found that when we have a less crowded house with less stuff and you just don't have all this junk you don't need, a little bit more minimalist mindset, you actually feel a lot freer and you don't attach happiness to spending money and buying things. You attach it to hanging out with friends and doing things like that, instead of always trying to get that little high out of buying something. So when I bought this house, I needed to buy everything for it from the furniture to the appliances and I saved thousands of dollars by doing this a little bit differently. I did some research online and I found a shop near us that refurbishes um, old appliances or also will sell dented ones and things like that and I was able to get all my appliances that way. On my dishwasher, I spent $200 for it and it was about a $500 to $600 dishwasher. For the refrigerator, it was $300 and it was around a $900 to $1,000 refrigerator and both of these were six months to a year old when I got them. So I was able to save over 50% off for something that is very similar to something I would get in the store and has a warranty and is in incredible shape. I also did something similar to this with the furniture. I was able to get a couch and some chairs and a desk and things like that. And all of it was about half off what it would have been new and they were all very, very lightly used. Um, one of them I got from a doctor and he had just had it for a few months and another one I got from somebody who had never actually used it. They were more decoration. So I'm not saying everybody needs to get used furniture, but if you can look for something that is like new for under half the price of something new, then that might be a cool option. So while I'm all for enjoying your life and spending money on things that really do bring value, I think it's really important to not tie happiness and enjoyment with spending money. For me, I know I feel a lot better afterwards. I personally do, at least, spending a decent amount of money going to the movies or going out to dinner or um, just going out for drinks. I, I get a lot more enjoyment and fulfillment from exploring passions and 
hobbies and if you can find a hobby like making these videos like I really enjoy learning about finances and making these videos and hopefully at some point I'll be able to monetize that a little more but whatever your passion is for you you can definitely find a way to make money and really enjoy yourself while pursuing your passion we have saved a lot of money just in the past month or so by having the DIY mindset. If you own your own house or even if you just own your own car, try fixing the little things yourself before you call a professional. So if there's something wrong with a pipe or one of your appliances, try fixing it yourself before you give somebody $100 just to come look at it. Spend some time on YouTube. You can learn pretty much anything on YouTube and you can do basic repairs and basic improvements and maintenance on your home or your car by yourself just by spending some time researching it and then you're literally saving money while learning a skill that will be useful to you for the rest of your life. This would not be a Gabe Bolt video if we did not mention coffee. If you have a habit of getting coffee every day on your way to work, spending that two to three to four dollars, you might actually be better off spending fifty, a hundred dollars getting a really nice coffee maker or Chemex or something like that, and then going out and buying really good coffee as opposed to something that's really cheap and you will have a much better cup of coffee but it'll be a lot cheaper you can save hundreds of dollars a year by having better coffee every day it's not about depriving yourself it's about doing things differently than everybody else and doing things with a purpose and smartly if that's a word i found that going out and exploring local coffee and really trying to figure out what i like has made a big difference and i really really enjoy that morning cup of coffee that has like a depth of flavor as opposed to just buying the most cheap generic thing you can get or going out and getting something that might be cheaper generic in like a, a Starbucks or a Dunkin's or something like that. Everybody has hair and everybody needs haircuts. Some need it more than others. But this can be something that you can also do for next to free instead of spending a lot of money every month or every two months on doing this. For the average Roman, it is $43 to get their hair cut and for the average men, it is $28. I realize this can vary significantly, um, but that is what the stats that I found online were. And also to get your hair dyed can be $75 to $100 we are able to do all of this at home my wife cuts my hair and she cuts her own or I cut hers and she dyes her own hair and we're able to save hundreds of dollars a year just by doing that ourselves and it's really fun actually and it doesn't take all that much time so like the coffee example you're better off going out and buying wicked nice scissors and wicked nice clippers and, and things like that and doing your hair yourself watching some YouTube videos you can learn anything on YouTube if you guys enjoyed this please like and comment on this video as that is what helps the YouTube algorithm push my stuff out there and I really do appreciate it we'll be coming with more stuff next week See you then.